Madam Minister, uh, dear uh, mayors, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, bicycle friends, first of all, thank you for this invitation, which is also for me a possibility to come back to Belgium, where I have been living for three years as director of the uh, Danish uh, Cultural Institute in uh, Brussels. First of all, I think it's important to uh, emphasize that cyclists are not extraordinary people. They're citizens, they're people who just chose that as a mode of transportation. They are not using the bicycle because they cannot afford a car. They are not uh, using the bicycle because there are no other alternatives, but they actually find it a good way to uh, start the day and live their lives. Um, Flanders is moving very much up ahead uh, in the sort of international league on uh, bicycle accessibility. And that, of course, also gives you some uh, very strong obligations, which uh, I hope I, in my presentation, can uh, inspire you a little bit on both on how to increase the citizens' engagement, but also on what challenges uh, I see uh, ahead. Just so you know, we're up there in the uh, north of uh, Europe. Maybe that's not necessary to say here, but just to be sure uh, where we are. Um, <laughs> We are a, uh, very different from uh, Belgium. We have a very uh, long coastline of almost 8,000 kilometers. We consist of 406 islands, where only uh, 78 uh, kilometer, uh, where only 78 is inhabited, and the highest point is uh, 171 meters above sea level. No Dane lives further away than 50 kilometer uh, from the sea, and that is, I think, also a part of understanding a Danish mindset, is uh, the uh, closeness to uh, nature. And we were quite surprised that uh, other countries were sort of a bit shocked about seeing prime ministers and uh, politicians on bicycles, but that is actually an everyday sight that you can see uh, and you can meet all sorts of, uh, of notabilities on the, uh, on the bike lanes in Copenhagen. And that is probably the first advice I can ever give you, leadership by example. Make sure that your political leaders are cycling. Make sure that uh, your pop stars, your rock stars. And in Denmark, we are so lucky. Maybe you cannot do that, but uh, in Denmark, we have even our royals cycling. Uh, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, bring his two twins to kindergarten every single morning in a cargo bike with Secret Service in a car and two bicycles behind him. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure he did not choose that, uh, but uh, that's life. I have to say two of the Secret Service are actually on bicycle because elsewhere they're not able to follow him. Um, but that's how it goes. The Danish Cyclist Federation, very short introduction, uh, established in 1905, uh, the second oldest Fitzebond in, uh, in the world. Uh, so in that sense, we are a, a historic partner in uh, this. Uh, and. Uh, of course, we are built on a very, very strong cycling tradition, historic cycling tradition in uh, Denmark. One of the reasons for that is um, that uh, the car taxation, and I hope there's not any Bel Belgians here with weak hearts, we have a car taxation of 180% in Denmark. So cars are extremely expensive compared to Belgium. Uh, that is the reason why a lot of families uh, traditionally sort of gained and made sure that their mobility worked with no use of a car. And uh, I think uh, that is probably one of the uh, best reasons for, uh, for, for the development of the bicycle culture and the backing of the bicycle culture in, in, uh, in Denmark. Of course, like any other European countries uh, in Europe, we, after the Second World War, experienced a rise in uh, welfare and also uh, a development of our welfare state. And uh, that, of course, uh, led to an increased uh, congestion by cars. And uh, that was a, a good time for our movement because we could be activists at, uh, at that time. And, of course, one of the big misunderstandings in all this is that the car is equal to freedom. No, the car is not equal to freedom, and at least not if you're sitting on a queue on a highway. Mobility is freedom, and that is the mindset that we have to think to give people the ability uh, to move uh, around. Today, uh, we are an organization of 17,000 members. Uh, we claim that we represent the 4.5 million uh, cyclists in Denmark, but of course we should uh, have more members to, to actually say that. But the member uh, organization is only 10% uh, of our activities. Uh, we have a 5 million euro uh, budget. We have 25 people employed in our office 
office in Copenhagen. We have 40 local branches all over the country and 23 representatives in the municipalities where we are not uh, present. Our work is concerned around advocacy, lobbying towards politicians, a lot of campaigns and knowledge gathering. And uh, this may be also uh, an uh, inspiration for you uh, is uh, as a Fitzabond to produce campaigns that the different municipalities can actually use or state institutions can actually use in their uh, communication. Um, just to, to give you a little uh, translation, we cycle to work, all children cycle, uh, a campaign light on with Ludwig, which is a sort of a lighting uh, campaign, uh, big cycle day, uh, we can cycle a, a before school uh, campaign and uh, bicycle knowledge, which is basically gathering uh, all uh, uh, knowledge and distributing that. We Cycle to Work is uh, one of the biggest uh, activity campaigns in Denmark, uh, gathering, it has exists since 1997, and it gathers almost 100,000 people from workplaces uh, on, um, all over Denmark, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's nationwide. And uh, it's a very, very good way for us to uh, communicate all the good things that there is uh, on cycling. The second thing which I think is important is to have a very, very strong emphasis on children. I think uh, everybody remembers uh, being a child. Everybody remembers the expansion of your radius as a child, your ability to sort of get around in your uh, neighborhood. But one has to remember that also for children, Cycling and walking are their only means of transportation. They do not have a, uh, an alternative. And today, I mean, science is good because it proves so many things, and it proves that children who are physically active are better students in school and uh, uh, actually are, are, uh, are less sick and all these good things. Seven to eight years, children will start cycling in uh, uh, Denmark, and one of the things that we see very important is to use... Uh, this culture of children cycling also to introduce a new traffic culture. Um, basically uh, having an emphasis on uh, safety with helmets, remembering uh, lights all the time. And we actually even go further by working already in uh, kindergartens uh, with children who are between three to uh, five years uh, old. We know that an early cyclist is an ongoing uh, uh, cyclist. And that is also one of the reasons why we want to use the new school reform in Denmark, which entitles or uh, makes uh, it obligatory that every school in Denmark provides 45 minutes of physical activity to the students every single day from grade zero to grade 10. And we see the introduction of a new urban culture, a new uh, traffic culture, a new physical culture as a, a part of uh, uh, that uh, scheme. Um, Working with people who work in kindergarten is also very important for us, giving them instruments on uh, how to uh, uh, address uh, the children when it comes to uh, good uh, traffic culture and, uh, and uh, biking accessibility. Together with the Ministry of Transport, the Danish Cyclist Federation has every year uh, given one of the municipalities in Denmark, there's 90 municipalities in Denmark, has given them the prize as the bicycle community of the year. And of course, we all know that, that a city gets proud and its citizens gets proud if somebody from the state comes and says, you actually do your job better than the other does. So I think that is also an inspiration uh, for you. A few words on uh, uh, Copenhagen and uh, our capital, but I have to say, it's not only Copenhagen, there's a lot of Danish cities that actually do a lot of uh, work there. It's a very flat city, but it's also like Bruges, a very historic city, and a lot of other Belgian cities, a very uh, historic city connected to Sweden by a uh, bridge, uh, and with an sort of underlying very strong environmental uh, understanding. This is our windmills just outside the city. This is our world-famous uh, harbor bath. Our harbor is so clean that you 
can actually swim and fish in it. And I have to say, and it has to make every uh, Belgian uh, proud, uh, the harbor bath is designed by a Belgian architect, Julian de Smit, uh, who lives and works in uh, Brussels. And uh, we are very, very happy that we have this little piece of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Belgium in, in our city. Um, the cycling culture is, of course, completely integrated uh, in the uh, city with a modal split of around 37% uh, cycling. So in that sense, it is not difficult to get a sort of backing to the uh, cycling case, if I can uh, put it uh, that way. Just an example, the cargo bike. Every Copenhagen, 27% of Copenhagen families with two children and more, they use their cargo bike as their uh, mean uh, sort of uh, transportation. And of course, it can be used uh, for a lot of different things, including, uh, including uh, 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 transportation of Christmas trees. The combination of bicycles and public transport is also uh, vital. Uh, the regional trains introduced uh, free uh, bicycle, uh, free bicycles on the train, and then actually increased the use of public transport with the trains with uh, 8%. But above anything is safety. If it's not safe to cycle, we will not get people to cycle. So a debate about how to increase the uh, safety, advocacy for more uh, safety, dialogue with uh, and cooperation with different partners on the safety issue. And one of them is the uh, Truck Drivers Association. It may sound funny, but we actually have a very, very, very good dialogue and, uh, and, uh, and cooperation with them because it may, of course, be big damages to those who are victims there, but I can promise you it is also a big price that the driver has to pay if this uh, uh, happens. Another thing to also in cre in, to create citizen engagement is to make sure that you make destinations in the uh, urban uh, landscape. This is a, a very good new food market that has opened in uh, Copenhagen and is very, very easily reached by bike. So if you have a destination somewhere to uh, go to. Shortly, just a few words about some of the uh, policies uh, which is behind this, and I will not spend uh, much in, except on saying that uh, there are uh, uh, ambitions on becoming the first carbon-free uh, uh, capital by 2025, which is also the reason why Copenhagen is a European capital, environmental capital uh, this year. Uh, there's a, a bicycle uh, ambition with three focuses, uh, the number of cyclists, uh, the feeling of safety, and also reducing the number of uh, accidents. There are uh, targets on, uh, on uh, increasing the accessibility to green and blue urban spaces. And finally, there are targets on air pollution, noise pollution, and organic servings. Why do I say this in a bicycle context? Well, because it is very important also to create citizens' engagement, to have a holistic approach uh, to this, and also to set up targets, measurable targets, uh, on uh, urban life, the ability to walk around the city. It may seem strange to you, but we actually do have a congestion problem on the bicycle lanes. It's, uh, yeah. So we actually also need to work on pedestrian policies, and also the desire to stay in the urban space. And of course, that is a discussion on what kind of urban space do you like to stay in? Do you like to stay in a parking lot? No. You like to stay in a nice square where the children can play, where there's some benches to sit on, and restaurants, and uh, so forth. So measurement is very, very important, uh, both on the political level, to have the politicians give the needed uh, money and donate the needed money, but definitely also for the citizens to understand that these are, uh, are, are good in investments. And of course, also uh, communication is extremely uh, important. A lot of these numbers are very well known and are a good example of what sort of uh, measurements that uh, you can make. And uh, again, uh, for example, if you ask the satisfaction uh, with Copenhagen as a cycling city uh, or the satisfaction of the amount of cycle tracks, this is not only cyclists being asked, this is people who transport themselves. And don't make the mistake of thinking that cyclists are special race. Cyclists are also car drivers. 
car drivers are also cyclists. People who are using the public transport are also cyclists, and so forth, and so forth. So there is a connectivity. And this should be the slide that ends all discussion on investing in bicycle mobility. It is good and sound for society to invest in, peop in things that makes us live a more healthy uh, lifestyle. And uh, uh, I do get provoked a little bit sometimes uh, when, uh, when uh, people say, yeah, but investing in cycling is actually investing uh, only for a minority. Can I tell you about 50 years ago, the car users were a minority. And funnily enough, we invested billions of uh, tons into their means of transportation. Now we are an increasing group of people who are actually concerned about our common society, how the financial situation of our children and grandchildren are going to develop. And you're all clever people here. You know what development takes on in Brazil and Russia and China and India. We really have to uh, work on it here in, uh, in, in uh, Europe. The Danes are not necessarily very climate concerned. You can see uh, most of them actually cycle because it's the fastest way to uh, get around. And again, socioeconomic uh, measurements I met a uh, council member in one of the Danish smaller provincial municipalities. He had learned that uh, sending out one ambulance for an accident in involving a uh, car and a bicycle cost the municipality 100,000 euros at least. And again, it's a very easy calculation saying if you can reduce the number of accidents, you can actually save a lot of money that you can use for playgrounds for children or better uh, schools and so forth and uh, so forth. It's important to keep on uh, moving, setting targets that are also uh, a bit out in the future. Keep on working with innovation of what I understood of what the minister said. That is also one of the things that you uh, do here. It can be special constructions in the, uh, in, in the uh, cityscape. Uh, it can be special bridges for pedestrian and cyclist uh, uh, only. Uh, it can be the famous footrests of Copenhagen. They're actually very, very nice. It can be putting the uh, dustbin so it actually fits the cyclist. All these things that actually makes you feel good as a cyclist and feel that the city actually uh, likes you and cherishes you. But we do have challenges, and you will also have some of the challenges in the year to come. One of the things is the parking thing. Another thing is the e-bike, the development of the e-bike and the speed on the bicycle lanes, I'm pretty sure, will be an, an, an issue. Traffic culture behavior is an issue. Uh, an issue is also the combination travel, bicycle train, bicycle, bicycle car, bicycle car, bicycle, and so forth and so forth. Uh, safety and all the challenges and possibility that also lies uh, within uh, bicycle uh, tourism. Um, well, I talked about the uh, crown prince before, but this is another new invention that we will actually see in Copenhagen in a few uh, weeks' time. On 1st of April, 250 versions of the new electric city bike will be introduced in Copenhagen with a uh, interactive uh, iPad system up here, and that will be developed up to 2,000 uh, bicycles in, uh, in, in the uh, years to come. I'm pretty sure that this is a thing that is going to change the e-bike market in uh, Copenhagen. But the biggest invention uh, has uh, been the cycling uh, fund, uh, where uh, the, actually not this government, but the previous government, which was a right-wing government, set aside uh, 125 million euros for Danish municipalities to be used over a four-year period, where the local municipality paid 60% and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and the state pay 40%. This is the transport minister today, a uh, keen, uh, Pendler, a train user, uh, who is also a very keen uh, Twitter and Instagrammer, and I just read that yesterday he got his bike stolen from the station. So in that sense, as the Cyclist Federation, I'm very happy because then I know we will have some focus on safety for bicycles uh, on the uh, station. That is uh, how politicians also uh, work sometimes. This is the, uh, vi the, pri the vice prime minister of Denmark. You may have seen the picture, and that is again about leadership. When they were sworn in that government, four of the ministers arrived at the royal castle 
on bicycles. That picture went all over the world together with the selfie that our prime minister took. Um, but uh, it is very, very important to uh, show and have that uh, leadership. Um, the, um, and this is some of the things that the uh, cycling fund uh, covers. Uh, and that has shown three out of four Danish municipalities has applied money from the fund. Uh, and uh, only one out of six actually got money. And that means that the innovation power is enormous and also the will to invest is enormous. We will have a new uh, national cycling strategy which the Ministry for Transport has developed uh, together with a lot of different stakeholders including ourselves and has been uh, very good. These are the lessons that we have learned and that we would like to share. Holistic approach to create livable cities, a focus on innovation also, talking to the citizenship, the feeling of citizenship, the feeling of being a responsible citizen that actually through procurement and physical activity uh, contributes to the uh, society's economy, communication, and of course also maintenance. I mean, don't build new bicycle lanes, don't build great bridges if you don't have the money to maintain them. It's so insulting as a cyclist when you feel that the politicians have done something and then they just uh, don't do anything. That is not very nice. And I have to say, after having lived three years in Belgium, I cannot praise your country enough. And I can also say that I really see the amount of cyclists going up and up and up and up. So you are definitely on the right track. Good luck. Thank you.